Good morning and thank you for joining us on Off the Press and Plus TV Africa. I am Benny Ark and we have the headlines from our national dailies this morning and we'll go into analysis and review. And joining me for this this morning, I have Saidu Basharu, a social and economic commentator. Thank you for joining us, thank Saidu. You. And also still with us in the building this morning is legal practitioner, Libero Soshoma. Thank you very much, sir, for staying with us. Thank you. And we want to take a look at the headlines making the rounds in the Punch newspaper this morning. Federal government orders forensic audit of discos, and that you find on page 28 of the Punch newspaper. And also the federal government makes a U-turn admits Boko Haram targeting Christians. Southwest assemblies to pass a Motsekun bill on Tuesday. House Saraki diverted Quara 10 billion naira, says the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC. 21 killed as police vigilante is battle casino bandits. And Bauchi governor's head, head PDP panel probing 2019 elections. Repentant terrorists to enjoy foreign education, says the Senate bill. And Ubeck, Ted Fawn to fund rehabilitated insurgents agency. Buhari called seven months after Leah Sharibu's abduction, says mother. And tears flow as Remo Star's player is buried. Coronavirus. Saudi Arabia suspends pilgrims' visa, Iran's VP infected. Policeman's lover dies during suspected sex romp in Ekiti. And still in the punch this morning, court dismisses Amber Dates bid to stop boss probe. Jilted lover jumps into Lagos Lagoon, but was rescued. And Ogun PDP suspends secretary, rubbishes Abuja peace meetings. This and more making the headlines in the Punch newspaper. And where do we kick this off this morning from, gentlemen? Federal government makes a U-turn at mates, Boko Haram targeting Christian. Why is this now being played on the lines of religion? Mr. Shuma, you're, you're laughing about yes, that. Uh, yes, <laughs> because what, what we should be discussing are issues we are not discussing. Yes. I, I wonder why it should be whether Boko Haram are killing Christians or killing Muslims. The fact is that Boko Haram are killing Nigerians. Yes. And so, um, if, you, if, they are, if they are Muslims, are they not humans? If they are Christians, are they not humans? And government should be up and doing. Boko Haram are killing people, terrorists, bandits everywhere, kidnappers on the rampage. And I expect that by now we should you know, change our approach and strategies to this and stop you know, playing it along the line of religion, be it Christian or be Muslim. Yes. Boko Haram does not represent Islam in as far as I'm concerned because I know at least um, much about Islam too. And I know that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did say that you should seek knowledge as far as mm. China because then China was seen as you know, the end of the world. Yeah. And so if Boko Haram is saying that they forbid anything, uh, Western education, and yet they are using gadgets. Yes you know, produced from this Western education. It, it's, um, it, it shows uh, hypocrisy. And so government also should not swallow that bait right. of, you know, running along that uh, line. Saidu, your, your thoughts on this? Yes, so, yeah. um, I think where government is very reactive, you know, um, there seems to be that narrative that um, Boko Haram targets Christian and the pressure is building up. And yeah. I think, you know, government is just trying to play along. I uh, agree with liberals 100%. Uh, Nigerians are being attacked. We're practically in a war situation with Boko Haram. It's not, it's not about uh, Muslims or Christians. Nigerians are being slaughtered every day, and we should address it as such. Not uh, Muslims or Christians, but innocent civilians are killed. And uh, putting that uh, religious or ethnic coloration just dry, shifts you know, away the core of the problem there. You know, that this insurgent, it's a big problem that needs collective uh, effort. approach, effort. All right. Let, let's dwell on an um, interesting twist of event right here. And the, the bill was, was, was came, came on, on the news <laughs> early on this week. Repentant terrorists to enjoy foreign education, um, the Senate bill. And you beg Ted Fawn to fund rehabilitated insurgents. Agency and Buhari called seven months after Leah Sharibu's abduction. I'm the mother. Your reaction to this? I'm still on the bill to. to um, you know, when I hear things like this, tears fr flows in my eyes and in my heart. I, I cry, I weep for our country um, where our soldiers are dying, you know, and their family are begging for rehabilitation. And here we are rehabilitating the killers of these soldiers. What you're telling people is the, like the same way I criticize and condemn amnesty for militants. Mm. Because at that time, 
till date, it was di it's still difficult for us to, you know, actually find out who is a militant. Yeah. Because we also give amnesty, blanket amnesty to armed robbers and kidnappers. Some who had matters in court, all of a sudden they were all granted amnesty. And in the same vein, we are, you know, towing the same line today. People who took up arms against the state. What you're telling people is that it take, it is, it's beneficiary to take up arms. What they're telling people who have the capacity but are not carry arms now is that go carry arms and, you know, the government will recognize you. Mm -hmm. What are you, what message are you sending the parents of the victims? Nobody's taking care of the victims and rather what you're doing now, you're going to send them, those people who took up arms, you know, against the state abroad. Yeah. So what it means is that tomorrow liberals go take arms against the state and then the state will listen to you. It's sad. You, quickly, your thoughts, your thoughts on this, yes, please. Yeah, um, I, it's, I agree with <clears throat> Libros. Um, just to add that, um, I think it was last week, Chad executed 10 uh, Boko yes. Haram militants. I mean, that shows seriousness yes. on their part. And sadly, or, on our part here, we're granting amnesty. I am not in support of that. I think it's counterproductive. Like he said, it will only encourage other people, you know, to seek that path. I see um, a precedence from the amnesty program, and I think we should discourage it. Uh, what, what, what are the alternatives? I mean, total, total annihilation of this, of this no, insurgency? You, 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 only, you only rehabilitate, you know, people when you have, you know, defeated... Boko Haram, and you now say, okay, after defeating Boko Haram, there are some people who need rehabilitation, and not the kind of rehabilitation we're talking now you say, about. This has not been done from a vantage point at no, all. Not at, no, not at all. You're still fighting them, and then what, you, 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 the only way you can, you can also do this, you can have a buster home, okay. where you take the, the child soldiers, you keep them there, you know, de radicalize and these are people who have been radicalized for 16 years upward, and then you think you can just de, de radicalize them oh, in no, one month and then bring them back into the military. No wonder you're having, you know, some of some of, of the soldiers having to turn against their colleagues. And we'll take a look at the Guardian newspaper, first headline in the Guardian. National Assembly probes alleged inflated 151 billion Naira road contracts, gapping monetary rates. And no rest until we get acceptable laws for Amote, who says the Southwest Houses of Assembly speakers. Senate considers stiffer penalties as Nigeria loses 271 billion naira yearly to gas flaring. Mm. Jilted Uber passenger jumps into Lagos Lagoon. 17 bandits, others killed in fresh casino attacks. And federal government urges religious leaders to unite against terrorism. More Boko Haram members surrender to army. Nigeria not prepared for coronavirus, Senate wants. Now, this is very topical, and we should talk about this seriously. And early on in one of our news, we had the, the Minister um, of State for Health, Senator Olori Nimbe Mamora, and we, he, he said what the situation was. Um, Liberals, I'm going to start off with you. Were, were you impressed with, with, with the comment of the Minister on this issue as it, as it stands? I, I was uh, completely, completely disappointed in um you know, the comments from the minister. Um, um, in fact, it was so bad that the minister had to, you know, be, he, he was um, putting a um, percentage of um, a death rate on it, that, yeah. oh, it's 3%, Percent. Percent. and that out of 100, you know, cases, and, you know, you might just record three deaths. Three is high. And I didn't expect yeah. that from the minister. And, you, you, you know, you asked him a question on um, the... The, 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 the capacity to, to withstand this. Yes. You know, against the backdrop that this man came in on the 25th and then they didn't discover, he, he didn't answer anything yes. on that at all. He was completely silent on it. And, and so when you listen, this is a minister for state for health. And so when you listen to the minister's statement, what it completely tells you is that there is no, no preparedness you know, on it. The minister did not talk like a medical doctor at all, and I'm completely disappointed in him. But I would say that, thank God it happened in Lagos, and I have confidence in the ability of Lagos state government yeah. to manage because I had seen it happen before with the Ebola crisis. Outbreak. Yeah. And so they still have the, a disease control center in Yaba, and, and so with capable hands and all the facilities in place, I have confidence that Lagos state will be able to manage it. If we leave federal government alone, 
I tell you, we'll just um, be waiting to die by yeah. installment. Our, our airports come to mind particularly. I mean, in, 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 in board, inbound tourism, domestic travelers and people coming into the country. What measures should they be looking at right now at those entry points, at every of our entry points? Because it's critical to, to this um, virus coming into the country. Absolutely. Yes, <clears throat> so you do. That, that um, like you said, is very critical. Um, the regime we have right now, I understand, is just uh, you feeling a small piece of paper to uh, <laughs> disclose if you've had any or the countries you've visited, uh, presupposing that I'll tell you yeah. sincerely if I've had, I, I think it's not uh, the right approach. Um, we need to have that whole retinue of uh, checks with proper equipment to scan, you know, like we used to do in the past. Uh, that is very key because that's where it, it all starts from. Uh, I'm surprised how the Italian got in without uh, being uh, tracked, at least with the yeah. temperature. We yes. should have, you know, the sign should have been there. So more has to be done at that point of entry, you know, but I don't see, I don't see that happening. Again, okay. you know, we're very reactive, you know, until <clears throat> we begin to see effect before you see the purchasing uh, equipments that will do that. But we've had, you know, quite a bit of time, you know, to prepare, prepare for this. Yeah. Um, oh. Liberal Shuma, while we're talking to Dr. Mark from Abuja, he did say giving out tropics and the fact that um, this virus thrives other setting um, conditions and degrees. Do, do, do you think we might, because of our tropic, given the fact, hey, we, we know how it's, it's obtainable yet, do you, do you think we might be able to curtail it and without it spreading as much as it, we've seen it in, in, other, in other climes? I'm uh, not a medical doctor. Yeah. Um, but I listened to him and I yes. know medical doctors would not want to sound alarm. So he probably also... Because he did want, say that, that yeah. we, we, there's no need for panic here, yeah. that's what he said. That, uh, but, you know, he also might want to, you know, be very, very politically correct. But knowing Nigeria and the way we react to issues, Seydou just, you know, said something that all we do at the airport is just give a piece of paper, write the country you've visited and, you know, how you feel. And, that, and this is a virus that had been spreading like wildfire since January. So other serious-minded countries are already taking steps to ensure that once the plane lands, they go in and do all the checks. But we're not doing all of those. So now, even when this first case initially was denied until last night, so with all of this in mind, I would still want to take whatever you know, Dr. Mark did say with a pinch of salt and you know, advise Nigerians to take their destiny in their hands by observing strict hygiene conditions. All right. the, the, that's the, the only way for All me. Right. And lastly, let's take a look at the Vanguard newspaper. 2023, Aerofi's power shift to South comment raised dust and gridlock reps moved to probe alleged extortion at Lagos port. And State of the Nation, Nigeria on the brink, eminent Nigerians. That's an opinion piece in the Vanguard newspaper this morning. Federal government facilitates $20 million tech fund, 90 billion naira agri loan. And Nigeria at risk of coronavirus, says NEC. Federal government not doing enough, says the Senate, and asks federal government to quarantine travelers from China. Oil price drops $5 below 2020 budget benchmark. And insecurity, religion not behind killings, banditry, Archbishop Kaigama. And lastly, this morning, the Vanguard Court OK's Lagos Assembly to probe Amber Day. And 2023, APC should be ready for eviction in Lagos, says Markin Day. Boko Haram targeting Christians to trigger religious wars, says the Honorable Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed. APC crisis, pro anti Oshomale protesters clash in Abuja. Let's quickly consider the, um, the, the comments credited to El Rufai, power shifting to the south. And now this is raising a whole lot of dust. Do you think there, is, there are other currents? Because lately there's been a whole lot of call and statements. Power 23 should be shifted to the south, should be shifted to the east. Are there other currents to all of this, to all of this cause? Saidu, let's start with you. Yes, um, I think um, it's, a, it's about time we start having these difficult conversations, if you like. Um, what he's doing, I don't think is out of place. Okay. Um, asking that we should, if we're talking about rotational presidency, presidency. and um, the South, Southeast has not had that opportunity after a long time, why don't we have that conversation now and begin to challenge them to put forward their best candidates? 
you know, we should have the conversation. I don't see a problem with that. Yeah, but, but the argument is, should, should we be talking about this based on merit or based on geopolitical zones? Absolutely. Um, or, 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 yeah. M merit. Merit is yes. part of it, but we're talking about rotational pressures. Because if we're to look Give at merits, the then we won't, we won't so much better on, on um, the, 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 the what, what, what region, what, what zone that person is coming yeah, from, which is still part of the problem. Our policy, our democracy has been suffering. Our constitution yeah. says we must have this, we should have, or I don't know if it's a silent uh, agreement that yeah. we should have rotational. Unwritten code. Unwritten Written. code that we should have this uh, rotational presidency. So give us the best from your region. You okay. See, uh, Benny, there, there, are, there are Nigerians who are meritorious, you know, in all regions. Yes. And to give these regions a sense of belonging, it's only natural and traditional that, you know, allow this go around. Okay. Because, let me give you quickly an instance. The fact that Obama was the president of America does not benefit Africa in any way. But uh, the blacks were happy. Yeah. Africans went agog uh, as if, you know, they are the ones governing America because it gave them a sense of belonging. Yeah. What it told them is, look, you can aspire to that level. And, and, and so, the also, Erufa initially, you know, was of the view that he should remain in the North. But I think he also gauged opinion poll and discovered that, look, look, that's no longer a popular idea to sell. And mm. if APC must remain in the saddle come 2023, they will have to change gear. And so quickly, he's testing the water Absolutely. and to actually know, also gauge the mind of the people. And it's only natural and traditional that also it should go down to the southeast. Will it, will it be unjustifiable if come 2023, the North, the, North, the North still retains the presidency? It will be impossible for them to retain it. <laughs> will it be unjustifiable? It will be unjustifiable. It will be because here, you look at all the big political actors. Yes. We're talking about merit also. You look at the actors and the names that will naturally come up. Okay. You know, if you look at all of them, you won't, you, it, will, it will be unjustifiable for the North to still retain it. One of the reasons he even went to the north was, okay, yes, because of the, the north were shortchanged with the death of Yaradua, and, and then, okay, and let's bring somebody yes. who has merit from the north, and, you know, who is a northerner and also has merit, but we are where we are. And, and so that's why people are saying, look, even if it's going to the southeast, it shouldn't just be as of right. Mm -hmm. It should be that they truly, you know, not just deserve it, you know, want it, and then it should be somebody who is capable who should be able to deliver, you know, and then be able to unite Unified. us because we are divided much more than we ever be before. And then we can begin to take it up from there and then talk about, okay, how do we de-emphasize, you know, all of this rotational and consistently look on yeah, but, that but, is yeah. if it will but be possible. People have argued the fact that the Southerners have not so much, I mean, been, been in the front line for this that they just expect it to be dropped on their laps. I mean, do, do you think so? No, Nobody I, says I don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I think they have tried. Um, I, I don't, but probably not tried enough okay. because they made their position very, you know, um, obvious, you know, and I think um, that uh, men has to change a little bit. They need to align with yeah. the north, with the southwest, yeah. you know, if they must get this. But I mean, the general uh, contention is, you know, right now we need that inclusiveness from yeah. if we must be one then let them also have a taste but right. put their best person. Social and economy commentator Saidu Basharu, thank you very much for joining us on Of The Press. And also legal practitioner Liberos Oshoma, thank you for your contributions on Of The pleasure. Press. And that's what we can take this morning. Of The Press, we're back next week, same time. This is Plus TV Africa, and I am Benny Ark. Do have a good morning.